Hi boys and girls, my name is Ashley Gardner and I'm the Director of Children's Ministries at MLEPC. So glad to have you guys joining us for Children's Church today. We have been going over for the past couple weeks and even months the life of Jesus. Just recently, we were focusing on his miracles. In the past couple of weeks, we were talking about when he healed the 10 lepers. We talked about when Jesus, it was my favorite Bible story when I was a little kid, when Jesus brought the girl that was dead back to life. And last week, we talked about when Jesus healed the man that was at the pool at Bethesda. He was crippled, he was uh, paralyzed, couldn't use his legs, and he had been waiting by this pool to be healed. They thought that the first person who got in the pool after the water was stirred would be healed. But because he was paralyzed, because he couldn't move his legs, he was never going to be the first one in. So even though he was waiting, it wasn't going to happen until Jesus came along. Jesus was the one that told him to pick up his mat and walk. And last week we talked about how it was on a special day that he was healed. Jesus healed him on the Sabbath. And remember that was the day where the Jewish people believed they weren't supposed to work. And so the Jewish leaders were furious with Jesus that he would heal someone on this day. And because Jesus was doing miracles, because he was um, healing on the Sabbath, the leaders wanted to get Jesus in trouble and even to kill him. So we're gonna continue our story today and we're gonna find once again how the leaders were not very happy with Jesus, but how Jesus performed an amazing miracle. And I love that the story, uh, the miracle that we're learning about today, because it fits so perfectly with what my day actually looked like today. I had to drive Mr. Gardner to an appointment, a doctor's appointment, but it was a very specific doctor. It was someone that has to do with these. What am I holding? They are glasses. Now, Mr. Gardner, his glasses are in really bad shape. <laughs> he loves to wrestle our two little boys. We have a three-year-old and a five-year-old and they have so much fun together, but sometimes they can get a little rough. And his glasses were a casualty, uh, were kind of lost in the battle of their wrestling match. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but they completely fell apart. They had the sides of them came off and even to the point where this wire that like holds his lens in is falling off. Now, the crazy thing was this <laughs> was not his first pair of glasses that broke. These were actually his backup glasses. His original pair also broke in a wrestling match, and then these ones broke <laughs> in a different one. So today he had to go to the eye doctor to try to get a new pair of glasses. It's called an ophthalmologist. He went there to get his eyes checked and to get a new pair. And when we went in, we told them we needed the most, the strongest, most durable pair that's not gonna break. <laughs> Our way of actually choosing his glasses was they showed us a pair that you literally could bend it in half and it didn't snap, it didn't break at all. And so that's the pair that Mr. Gardner got. But why do people wear glasses? Why are they so important? And Mr. Gardner was actually walking around. If he didn't have contacts in his eyes, he was wearing these glasses around. He was wearing them to drive and around the house. Sometimes if he was going into the grocery store, he was a little embarrassed by them. So he would take them off and really struggle to see when he was in the grocery store. But glasses are so important because they help you do what? They help you to see. Now, like I said, sometimes Mr. Gardner would take them off, but he would really struggle if he was in the grocery store or somewhere out and he didn't was embarrassed to wear them. He would struggle to see what was around him. He would have to get really close to the groceries to see what he was actually looking at. Um, to drive, it was not safe at all if he would drive without his glasses because he couldn't see. Seeing is so important and we use it in so many different parts of life to walk around our house, to walk to school, to even just walk through a room and not run into things, to be able to recognize people's faces, to be able to read. Um, I know for me, we were at 
Lake Erie again. We did a quick day trip to Presque Isle and to even just appreciate God's creation, to be able to look out and see the waves and to see my boys and watch them play. It was such a blessing to be able to use my eyes to see that. Seeing is such an important thing and we will do whatever we can to make our eyesight better. Whether it's wearing glasses, I actually, when I was a little bit younger, had surgery on my eyes, it's called laser eye surgery, to make it that I wasn't gonna need glasses or anything like that, but I made it that I could see. But to not have that, to go about life in darkness, to be blind is a big deal. There's people that have that, that can't see at all, but it's really hard to do that. In our story today, the man that was healed, you can guess it, was blind. He couldn't see at all. And not only could he not see, he had been blind since birth. He had never seen, not even once. He had never seen his parents' faces. He had never seen a beautiful sunset. He had never seen a smiling face. His life consisted of begging for money. That's how he got by until he met Jesus. And we're gonna talk about what Jesus did to heal him and how the Jewish leaders responded to it and how this man's life changed. So we're gonna watch it on our video from the Gospel Project. I hope you guys liked the video and we'll talk about it again in just a few minutes. Enjoy. Hi everyone, Megan here, and I'm Jessie. Megan, check out this book my friend Diego let me borrow. Feel the dots. Oh, cool, Jessie. This book is in Braille. Uh, what is Braille? <laughs> Braille is a way people who cannot see can read with their fingers. A person can feel the dots and read the words. Oh. That makes sense because Diego cannot see. He is blind. He was born that way. Oh, just like the man in our Bible story. In today's Bible story, there was a man who had been blind since he was born, and Jesus made him able to see. Listen to this story. Jesus was walking with his disciples when he saw a man who had been born blind. The disciples asked, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Did this happen because he sinned or because his parents sinned? Jesus answered, Sin did not cause this. This man was born blind so that people could see God's power. Jesus also said, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then Jesus spit on the ground. He made mud and put it on the eyes of the man who was blind. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, Jesus told him. The man went and washed. When he came back, wow. he could see. The man's neighbors were amazed. They took the man to the religious leaders. How did this happen? They asked. The man called Jesus put mud on my eyes, he said. I washed and now I can see. The religious leaders did not want to believe that Jesus could give sight to people who were blind. Again, the man who was healed told the religious leaders what happened. He believed Jesus must have come from God. But the religious leaders threw the man out of the synagogue. Jesus found the man and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Tell me who he is so I can believe in him. You have already seen him, Jesus said. The Son of Man is talking to you now. The man said, I believe, Lord, and he worshipped Jesus. Sin keeps us from seeing what is true about God. Jesus came as light into a dark world. 
He helps us see what is true so we can know God. Those who trust in Jesus are freed from sin and worship Jesus as Lord. Welcome back. I hope you guys liked the video. So when Jesus healed this guy, what did he use? I bet it's something that you guys have seen, have played with before. He used mud, mud off of the ground. He bent down and he picked it up and he put it on the man's eyes and told him to go wash in a pool, the pool of Siloam. And after this guy did it, his eyes were healed. Now, was this special mud? Was this mud that if we get it today, if we put it on all blind people's eyes or people with bad eyes, that their eyes will be healed? No, it had nothing to do with the mud. Why was this man healed? It was because Jesus was the one doing it. It is because this man met the Son of God. Jesus had all of God's powers. And it was Jesus, the same being that was there at the creation of the world, the same being that helped to form Adam and Eve out of the dust of the earth. This man, Jesus, this man that was also God, is the one, the same one that bent down and put the mud on this man's eyes. It was because he was God that he was able to heal him. And did this guy do anything wrong? The disciples asked, was it because this man sinned? Did this guy mess up or did his parents? It wasn't for any of those reasons that he was blind. It was so that God could be glorified, that God could put his awesome works on display through the life of this man. I wonder if that's true for us sometimes, if sometimes there's bad stuff that happens in our own lives. Sometimes we might wonder, did we mess up? Did we do something wrong? And that's why bad things are happening. But sometimes it's so that God can put his awesome works on display, that he can kind of show off and show us what an amazing and powerful God that he is. So Jesus healed the blind man on a certain day of the week. What was it? It was on the Sabbath. It was the same as what happened with the crippled man, the paralyzed man at the pool. Jesus healed on the day that no work was supposed to happen. So when the religious leaders heard about this, just the same as what happened with the paralyzed man, they were furious. And they questioned this man. They even brought in his parents, the formerly blind man's parents, and they were asking them, what happened? Who healed him? Did you see it? And the parents were so scared of the religious leaders that they didn't want to answer. They basically said, he's our son. We know he was blind. We don't know who healed him or how he was healed. He's old enough. You go and ask him because they knew that if they answered correctly, if they answered the truth, that they would get thrown out of the temple. So they put it back on the blind man, the formerly blind man to answer. Now this man, he wasn't quite sure at first who Jesus was. He thought that maybe he was a great teacher or a prophet, uh, but he knew that Jesus had healed him. He knew that he had been blind and could now see once again. They didn't like this. They didn't like that Jesus had healed him. But that didn't stop the blind man. That didn't stop the blind man from following Jesus. Just like Jesus came back and talked to the paralyzed man and told the paralyzed man who he was, he did the same for this blind man. After the blind man did get thrown out of the temple, Jesus comes and he finds the blind man and he asked the blind man if he believed in the son of man. And the blind man, or formerly blind man, basically says, I don't know who he is. And Jesus says that he is the son of man. Now that seems like a weird phrase to us. We don't know we have a hard time understanding what that means. But when Jesus says he's the son of man, he's referring to something that's in an 
Old Testament book of the Bible. Um, there's a couple places where it talks about it, but in the book of Daniel, remember Daniel from Daniel in the lion's den, um, the one that continued to pray even though he knew it could cost him his life and how God protected him. God spoke to Daniel in several visions. We actually learned about that in children's church in the fall before COVID-19, we talked about some of these visions. Well, one of them in the book of Daniel chapter seven, Daniel has a vision about the son of man and who he's going to be. I'm gonna read it for you. This is Daniel seven, starting at verse 13. In my vision, I saw one who looked like a son of man. He was coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the eternal God. He was led right up to him, and he was given authority, glory, and kingdom. People of all nations, no matter what language they spoke, worshiped him. His authority will last forever. It will not pass away. His kingdom will never be destroyed. That son of man, that was talking about Jesus. That was talking about God's son. That was a huge deal. And so Jesus said, who Daniel saw back in thousands of years that was written about in Daniel seven, that's me, that's me. I'm the man that healed you. And I am that son of man. I am the one that people are going to bow down and worship. I'm the one that came from God. How cool is that? The blind man hears this, and not only does the blind man believe it, the blind man worships Jesus. The blind man, not only has his eyes been opened that he can see around him. Think, how cool is it to have your eyes open and see Jesus? Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine that. But not only are his eyes opened, his heart is opened. He sees the Son of Man, he sees the Messiah, the Chosen One, and he worships him. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Jesus is the one that heals. Jesus is the one that saves. And just like with the paralyzed man, Jesus wasn't just concerned about healing his legs. He told the paralyzed man to not sin anymore, to not do bad stuff, and for the paralyzed man to follow Jesus. Jesus is showing this blind man himself. He is showing him what it means to not just have his eyes opened physically, these eyes, but having the eyes of his heart opened to see Jesus and see that salvation. So I wanna ask you guys, can you see? Do you see Jesus? Do you see how he's working in your life right now? Do you see in the midst of COVID-19, just like, God was using bad stuff for his glory. Can you see how maybe some bad situations and stuff that's going on right now, how God could use it for good? What is he trying to teach you right now? What are some of the lessons? How, are he, how is he opening up your heart to better know him? I want you guys to be able to see the Pharisees could see with their eyes, but their hearts were totally blind to Jesus. I hope that for you guys, I hope your eyes and your hearts are open to him, that you can see and are not blind, that you're walking in his light. He says that he is the light of the world and he can shine light on any darkness, no matter what you're going through. I hope you guys liked this lesson today. I miss you guys and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Have a wonderful day and God bless.